Hello, everybody, and welcome to the A Historian It's podcast. So today I wanted to start off a little bit differently, and I kind of want to address the elephant in the room, right? The issue that we're all dealing with is social distancing. Um, actually, the state of Colorado is now shut down except for essential services, um, grocery stores, rest, or, you know, takeout places uh, for restaurants, and then um, medical services. So we're basically shut down. Everything else is shut down right now. So we are at home. We've been at home for about two weeks now. Um, we've gone out to take walks and stuff like that, but we haven't had any kind of interaction with the public for about two weeks. My husband's been the one that's been doing the grocery shopping and then my daughter and I have been staying at home. Um, so that's where we are. We're very fortunate to have the resources that we do have and we have, um, both my husband and I have employment that we could do from home. So we're very fortunate from that perspective. I hope you are doing well. I know there's a lot of people that are struggling right now. Um, financially as well as mentally and psychologically. So I hope you're doing okay. Um, uh, for those of you who might not know, I actually suffer from um, anxiety and panic disorder and I actually am doing pretty well um, considering the, the, the circumstances. And what's interesting is that I've, I've actually also seen this from other people who suffer from anxiety is that, you know, we've this is how we usually live our lives. We are all, always constantly thinking about the hor the horrible things that will happen and um, constantly thinking about, at least for me, I'm constantly thinking about like death and horrible things happening and um, and all of these things add to my anxiety. So now when it's actually, it, we're in this situation, it's it's actually not that bad. I know I'm not, I'm not trivializing this by any means, but I think having lifelong anxiety has in some ways helped me to cope with this situation and a lot of individuals who are who don't have suffer from anxiety they're now realizing what it's like to deal with this on a daily basis um, and again I don't wish this upon anybody but at least it gives perspective to a lot of folks and at least I could um, provide a a way to kind of cope with with these feelings and um with the ideas of like impending doom that people aren't accustomed to that don't have this kind of um, issue. So it's, it's interesting kind of seeing it from a kind of a psychological perspective and in terms of, of mental health um, and seeing people that ordinarily don't struggle with these kind of issues that they're, they're having a hard time. So I'm trying to be um, more compassionate and obviously I know what they're dealing with. So I kind of have a way to help them cope and talk them out of the, that, you know, the anxiety inducing situation. Um, so I'm doing my best. I hope you're doing your best to help others around you that might be struggling as well. And um, yeah, so I, I wanted to still record because I think we all need a little bit of distraction here and there. And it gives me a little bit of distraction as well. Um, because my all of my classes have, of course, gone online now since the university is closed. So that's where I teach. And my students have been struggling too. So I think having two weeks, we basically had two weeks off. We had um, last week, we weren't allowed to do anything that was graded. So I gave my students an extension on all of the assignments. And then this week is spring break. So I think my students have had a little bit of time to kind of regroup. And I'm hoping that we could finish off strong. We have four more weeks of class left. We could finish off strong and um, they could come back refreshed on Monday. So we could talk more about our subject matter. Um, at least I'm hoping that's what happens. I think they, they're starting to finally come back. Um, for the first week, they they were kind of busy doing their own things. I had one student that had to pick up everything in a matter of one day and say goodbye to all his friends. Um, he actually, his family lives out in the UK. So they had to pack everything up and he had to get on a plane immediately before the travel ban um, came into effect or be before any kind of travel ban came into effect. He was really worried about that. So he had to get on a plane, say goodbye to everybody, leave. So I have several students who are now out of the country at, back in their homes, um, which has been a challenge. So of course they've, they've had a hard time with this. Um, and I've noticed that at least the generation my students are in are having much more of a hard time than um, my generation or my daughter's generation, right? My daughter is just, she's just bored and annoyed, <laughs> but she's doing fine. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how she remembers this time in her life. But anyway, I'll have her on at the end of the episode. Um, she has a couple of things to talk about. Um, so yeah, so that's, I just wanted to kind of put that up front. I know that's what's on everybody's mind. So I just wanted to kind of address that first. And um, now we could talk about some knitting to kind of distract you a little bit. And I do have a new candle. Um, ignore this mess. So we've been making napkins. Um, that's another thing. I had kind of a fas uh, fashion, 
a fabric stash um, that I was planning on doing some project bags with. I don't know why I hate project bags. I don't know why I was, I hate making project bags. I love project bags. I hate making them. Um, I tried it for a while and I just, it wasn't my thing. So I had a bit of a stash that, I mean, it was just like small pieces of fabric here and there. So we were able to make, we put together a bunch of napkins. We had to still sew them up. That's one of the projects we've been working on during spring break um, to make more cotton fabrics. So I'll kind of show you those when those are done. And here I have a new candle. Um, so wax and wool. I'm not going to pick it up because I'll probably set myself on fire. But <laughs> wax and wool was actually one of the vendors. I forget which yarn festival um, they were vending at. But anyway, the yarn festival got canceled. Yeah, I don't remember which one it was. But they were, they had a lot of inventory and I've never tried uh, any of their candles. And actually this one's um, rosemary and grapefruit. So if you want to check them out, it's Wax and Wool is uh, their their store name. And they're on Etsy and it's a small business. So you could be supporting a small business. Um, unfortunately, I know there's been a lot of, of small businesses as well that have been selling yarn um, because their shows have gotten canceled as well. And unfortunately, I am not in the market for yarn right now. I have I have no desire to buy yarn, honestly. I have, like, no desire because I've been going through my stash. It's kind of a knit from stash kind of a year, and I want to really minimize my yarn use because I have so many single skeins, so that really has an interest me in terms of buying yarn. I really want to support social uh, small businesses um, because of this social distancing thing, right? Um, and they're kind of suffering as well. So I bought, I bought a candle, and I bought a couple of other things that are coming in the mail. I bought a um, project bag, and what else did I buy? I think that was it. Um, and again, you know, we're kind of on a, a limited income right now because of what's going on. And we don't really, my husband's getting a little bit worried about his job. I think, I think it'll be fine. Um, but right now we're kind of trying not to spend too much money because we don't know what the situation is going to look like in a couple of months. But anyway, I mean, that's what everybody's kind of going through right now anyway. But yeah, so that was my, my purchase to kind of help out a, bit, a small business in our community. So let's get into um, podcast. So first, um, we have a knit along, make along that's going on right now in the Ravelry group, and that is the Stripey Mal, and it could be crochet or knitted, and it basically is anything that's striped. Uh, it could be self-striping, it could be creating your own stripes, as long as it's cast on or, on or after the 1st of January of 2020, and it runs all year long, so you could put anything into the chatter thread, you talk about it, you could um, contribute any kind of conversation to the chatter thread and any finished objects that you have those go in the finished object thread so the way that I'll be picking out prizes I'll be picking out prizes every quarter is that right yeah every quarter I had to think about it for a minute every quarter for the chatter thread and then I'll be picking prizes out of the finished object thread at the end of the year so it's coming up at the end of March I'll be picking out prizes I'll be closing the thread on the probably the first of April honestly whenever I remember. Um, I'll be closing the thread and then picking prizes from, or picking different folks from the chatter thread uh, randomly and um, give you out prizes. So I'll probably pick out three, three or so prizes. And they'll be probably pattern prizes. So be sure that you're, um, that you have an idea if you've contributed to any of those threads. If you have an idea of which patterns you might like, if you're chosen, that I could send you a pattern through Ravelry. So that is that, and uh, that is the striping mouth. That's the only knit along that we have going on right now. And um, yeah, let's get into finished objects. So I have two finished objects, and they're both socks. Because <laughs> if um, you've seen this podcast before, I have a huge problem with second sock syndrome. And I have a lot of single socks right now. I still have a lot of single socks in the mix right now. Um, but I was able to actually finish one of them, which I'll show you in a minute. But the grand, the grand work of art here not really work of art, but the, the largest piece that I've completed in a long time, the largest pair of socks are these. They're done. Um, these are my Desert Vista Dye Works socks, and I say this every month, but um, Desert Vista Dye Works is a indie dyer that um, has a knit along every year, and they have a monthly knit along, and you're supposed to base, basically use a skein of their yarn, at least a skein. forget how many. I think it's about 50, at least 50 grams. I believe that's the case, um, 50 grams of yarn and be able to make either, I think now she's allowing mittens or like gloves, but it's basically supposed to be socks or gloves, a pair of one or the other 
every month for the whole year and then you get certain prizes and discounts and stuff like that so this was my contribution for March so my husband's birthday is in March and he's not getting these in March because <laughs> it's already starting to get warm and he's not gonna wear these he's he's very particular about when he wears his hand-knit socks whatever anyway um <laughs> It has to be like really cold. Um, I usually wear them all winter long. Uh, I usually don't wear socks at all in the summertime. So I kind of kind of wear them from like basically September through March. So I'm starting to actually start putting them away now. But anyway, these are his. So that's why I did his in March so that I actually have something to give him for Christmas time. And as you see, they are very large. I took about 80 grams. A little more than 80 grams. I think it was 85 grams of yarn. And then I just had a smidge to put into my blankets, which uh, when I get a little bit more work on those, I'll be able to show all the blankets again. I haven't showed them off in a while. Um, so here they are. And um, they didn't fit in on any of my sock blockers because I don't have, and I'm touching my face, uh, I don't have um, large sock blockers. I just have medium ones and small ones because I don't knit him socks very often. Um, I maybe knit him a pair a year, if, if that. So here they are, and I did an afterthought heel. I forget how many, how long I did the leg and the foot. I was really bad about that this time. I really got to make sure to note that um, next time so I know how big to make them because every time I forget, and then I have to measure his foot, and it's a whole thing. So I got to be sure to keep better notes next time I make him a pair of socks. So those are done. My March socks are done, and I can put them in my Christmas list or Christmas box. I do have one more pair. These are still wet because I just blocked them this morning. I got them done last night because <laughs> I was so close. I'm like, well, I'm going to have them done by tonight so that I can show them on the podcast tomorrow. And here they are. So these are my, um, I call them my rainbow, my right back rainbow socks, but that's not the name of them. <laughs> um, sorry, my face is itchy. I will wash my hands later. <laughs> these are by White. White Birch Fiber Arts is the main color here, the rainbow color. And um, I got these at Rhinebeck 2018. So that was October 2018. I started them in November of 2018. I just got them done in March of 2020. So it's been a while, right? Almost, not quite almost two years, but a year and a half that these have been on the needles. I basically got the first sock done and then I just kind of put it away and then didn't come back to it for quite a while. So my friend Belle and I um, split the skein of yarn. So I had 50 grams and she had 50 grams. And then um, we also split it another, I don't know where it is, but it was a, a dark, a dark, like a black version of this. It had black instead of the gray. Um, this one's called Rainbow Warrior, I believe. It's what I have in my notes. Um, so this is called Rainbow Warrior. And then I just used, um, I believe it was some opal for the toes and then the heels. And... There you go, we have two of them. So this one, apparently, apparently, I didn't divide the the, the ball up evenly. <laughs> and um, this one, which one, this one? No, this one. <laughs> this one had more of the rainbow yarn than this one did. So I just ended up using more of the purple for the toe. It doesn't really matter. I don't really care. Um, nobody's gonna see it anyway, it's gonna be my toe. But anyway, yeah, they don't necessarily match. They're not matchy-matchy. I mean, you could tell they go together, right? Um, but they are done. And I am so excited that they are done. I made the the cuff a little bit shorter than usual um, because, again, I only had 50 skeins to work with or 50 grams to work with, which is fine. It's plenty for a pair of socks for me. And I do have 50 grams of the other sock as well, but my daughter has already claimed that. She wanted that one, so I'm going to make that one for her if I figure out where I put it because I don't remember where I put it now. <laughs> but So these are still a little damp. So these are still going to be drying and they're done. So I got another pair for my box and I have no idea how many I have in my box. Um, I don't have a whole lot, maybe two or three in my box so far. And here you have it. So those are all of my finished objects for this week. And now we're going to get into some works in progress. So I'm just kind of updating you. First I'll start with this one since I have two of the same pattern. And this is the... Habitation Throw pattern by Helen Stewart. It was one of her advent patterns this past year in 2019 and I was making a throw and then I was also making a like a table runner to kind of put on top of the table. I don't know what to call it. It's going to be under my plant, my, my plants, my house plants so it doesn't scratch up the, the wood um, table that it's on. Um, so I'm not sure what you would call that placemat. Anyway, I'm calling it a table runner. Eh, whatever. Um, but it's the same pattern. 
It's just, um, I'm, I'm doing this one in cotton worsted weight, so it's easier to wash. And then I'm doing my blanket in a advent calendar that I exchanged with some of my friends in um, last year. So let's start with this one. <laughs> um, so this is a bag by Sugar Tots. And um, she's a Canadian maker and dyer. She also dyes yarn. And this is my table runner, whatever you want to call it. Um, I'm making this one out of sugar and cream in the, it's called Seabreeze colorway. So this is the sugar and cream. Get this at Michael's or Joann's or Walmart. Um, all of those places I believe carry that particular brand. So I'm on the second ball right now. Um, I bought three for this particular project. Ah, last time I showed you, it was down there by that cupcake. So it's, it's grown a lot. I mean, it's worsted weight, so it's grown a lot. Um, I have to get it up to 23 inches, I believe. I'm, I'm up to 19 right now. So I have a couple more inches, but it goes by quickly. It's just, it's cotton yarn. I hate working with cotton. Um, so it's just taking a little bit longer. But yeah, I think I might actually pick this up today and work a little bit on it. And then, um, cause basically you're doing a, you're increasing, 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 and then you're decreasing. So it comes out like a square. And so, yeah, so I'm, I'm almost halfway there. And again, um, this is the habitation throw pattern. Um, I believe I made modifications to it. I forget how many stitches I cast on. It should all be in my... Um, Ravelry page down in the description box. That's where I keep all of my information all of my Ravelry pages all of my Ravelry pages <laughs> All of my Ravelry pages are down there and you can just link onto them and if I've made any modifications They should be there um, Apparently I did not include any information on this which I have to be better at it um, So there's that Let's See and this is my throw so you'll see I've added a few more colors since then I am on color 12, I believe now. So after I finish this color, then I start decreasing. So I'll show you where it was last time. So here it is, it's all kind of crazy colors. These are the colors that I just randomly picked out every day during Advent. Oh, here it is, my figgy pudding right there. You can see it. Where is it? <laughs> there it is. So last time you saw it, it was down here. And then I've added one, two, three, four, five, almost six more colors and yeah be careful it doesn't come off the the needles it's getting pretty big uh, pick them up here there we go so I've added more colors to this throw and I can't again since it's kind of bunched up on the needles I can't really tell how big it's gonna be but I'm just kind of going with it I kind of just do I don't I haven't really been weighing it or anything but I kind of just do um, when I'm sick of the color I kind of switch to the next color and I want to make sure that I have enough color to kind of that you can see the, the differences between the, the colors here. Um, so yeah, so I'm on color number 12, I believe now. And after this color, I'll start decreasing. And I'll get it done eventually. <laughs> Hopefully before Christmas this year. <laughs> so here it is. There's my habitation throw by Helen Stewart. And it's going to be very cozy. It's going to just make me think of my friends whenever I... I cuddle up in it. So there is that project. Let's see. I'll show you the, the project that I had last week on the podcast, or last time on the podcast, which was the Rift. Um, the Rift kind of sleepless tea by Jacqueline. Sh that was my dog. <laughs> she was stretching. I don't know if you heard that, but she was a, it was a big, long stretch that she had going on there and it made a lot of noise. Um, <laughs> so this is the a bag from one of my local yarn shops back in the day when I lived in Ohio. Um, it has no, no tag or anything on it, so I have no idea who they were, but I love this fabric. Little fox, it looks like my dog when she lays, that's how she lays in a little fox shape. One of my dogs anyway. Um, and the creator of this pattern is Jacqueline Schlesch, Sch mm. Sheshlak, <laughs> I believe that's how you say her name. Sheshlak, I'll put it on the screen and again, and again all the information is going to be down below. So last time you saw this, I've actually made some progress on this. So this um, was actually coming out of a yarn that I was frogging from another project. And last time you saw this was down here. That little clock, because I actually started it on Daylight Savings Day. So there we go. <laughs> so there's a little clock, progress keeper. And... I've made about several inches on this. 
Um, I believe the back, which is the longer side here, has to be, according to pattern, has to be like 9 inches. I think I'm going to take it to about 12 inches because I want it to be, I don't want, it's supposed to be a crop top, so I don't want it to be a crop top. I want to use as much of this yarn as possible, plus I didn't want it to be a crop top. And, um, yeah, so I have about that much. And you can see it's a little bit um, kind of see-through, at least the bottom, you can see through it. But again, I'm going to wear some kind of tank top or a cami or something underneath it, so it should be fine. But um, the yarn that I'm using is the Queensland United in the Cocoa colorway. And it's 55% lamb's wool and 45% cotton. So it should be really good for when it gets a little bit warmer. Um, yeah, and it's it's been sitting in my stash for quite a while. So I want to use it up. And I really enjoy working with this yarn. Um, it really has a different texture to it. It's very weird. Um, but it feels really soft. So I do like it. So... There's that project. And it's worked from the bottom up, if you, you couldn't tell. Um, and then I have two more projects I wanted to show you that I've made significant progress on. Um, this one I got from a fiber show, a fiber retreat that I went to in the fall, I think it was. I believe the name is on the inside. Yeah. So this is Retold Yarns. And I just love this little camel bag. Usually I don't see a whole lot of camel bags <laughs> or anything with camels, and I love camels. Um, they're one of my favorite animals. And this is my Ripple Camel Soul by Jessie Maid. And it looks like it's really, really tiny, <laughs> but I promise it stretches out a lot, right? Um, so it will stretch out a lot. I think I'm making the, am I making the medium or the large? I can't remember now. But hopefully it's in my project page. <laughs> but yeah, so this will stretch out a lot. It's just a um, three by three rib for a lot of inches. And then you kind of divide for the top, which I haven't looked that far ahead of how you actually do that. But um, yeah, so it's going to be a lot before I get, again, this, I think it's a shorter top than I usually want. So I'm probably going to make this a little longer. And last time you saw this was down here by this little rock from... Charmed and Dangerous. So I've made some progress. And again, this goes by really quickly. If you're just wanting some mindless knitting, this would be great to do that. And great for single, at least for my size. Um, I could do a single skein uh, project out of this. So I am using this, which is Pink Adobe Dye Works in the retro color. And it's just a fingering weight skein. And I had no use for this and I have tons. So if this works out well and this fits well, I have like so many more I could make because <laughs> I have a lot of single skeins that I could just turn into a top that would be really cute. Um, so I really like the way this is coming out. It has, you can see it has pinks and kind of aquas and I'm trying to debate whether that's dark. I think it might be like a dark brown. And then it kind of every once in a while, it has little specks of orange as well. So it's gonna be really fun um, for the summertime. And um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to getting this done as well. And um, if, again, if it works out and it fits how I, I'm expecting it to fit, um, I would be able to make tons more and be able to just take it as a portable project anywhere I go because it's easy to make. And then I cast on one project. So I've been trying, I've been wanting, I should say, I've been wanting to make two at a time socks. Forever. I tried it once and I couldn't get the hang of it. It was too fiddly and I just gave up. And I was like, because usually the way I do my socks is um, on two different needles. If I'm doing them at the same time, I do them on two different needles um, concurrently. And um, I've always wanted to try them to do it on the same needle, like two at a time. And so I finally watched a couple of tutorials. I'm going to put the um, Very Pink Knits tutorial, which I used, is how I kind of learned how to do this. And, um, yeah, so I started doing two at a time. And this is just an opal that I had in my stash. No, Regia. A Regia I had in my stash um, for quite a while. Let's see if it has a color name. It's color 09375. <laughs> so that's just a Regia, and it's supposed to be like a self-patterning yarn. And right now, this is what I have. And um, I just split the ball into and wound up the balls and 
I have this great little bag to separate the two balls of yarn. And they have, you know, yarn guides and everything. This is a used sew and sew bag. Um, that is the maker of this bag. Uh, and it's you. You, as in the sheep. You sew and sew. Okay. And so far, the verdict is, I'm not sure. <laughs> um, I like the idea of having two socks done at once and being able to have a consistency in the socks, have them be the same length because you're doing them at the same time. But I'm probably going to do afterthought heels because I think it's going to be way too fiddly to do any other kind of heel at the same time. And I'm probably going to take them off the needles for the toes, too. I don't know. I haven't decided. But basically, they're right now I'm doing the ribbing. I'm doing the cuff right now. Um, and then I'll just get into the stockinette. I'm just going to make them plain stockinette socks. I think it's too fiddly for me, honestly. Um, I don't think I could take this whenever I leave the house ever again. <laughs> I don't think I could take this with me because it just it's a lot of yarn management. Like, i got to keep moving the bag around so that things don't get tangled and then... I'm not a fan. I like the idea of it. I just don't like actually doing it. Um, so it's something I'm probably not going to do very often. I'm probably just going to use these for just knitting at home. Um, so yeah, kind of mixed reviews on that technique um, that I just decided to pick up while I was in isolation. <laughs> so yeah, those are my two, two at a time socks. And I will put the tutorial down in the description box if you're interested in trying to um, play with this technique. See, see what I mean? So it's a lot going on here. <laughs> I'm not a fan. Um, so yeah, there is that. And I know that some people swear by the two at a time socks. I just, I don't think I'm a fan of it. Um, I'd rather have my separate socks that I could kind of take with me and not have to worry about yarn management too much. So I think that is it for my knitting. I have one more thing to show you. So right after Christmas time, I actually bought a container about this big of clear plastic um, ornaments, Christmas ornaments that you put on the, the tree. And I bought, the, I mean, it was like super cheap. It was like a dollar for like a big box of clear ornaments. And what I decided to do this year is um, I labeled it to put 2020 on there. And I'm basically putting, whenever I finish a project, I put um, whatever I snip off to kind of weave in the ends and stuff like that. I've been putting in this little ornament. You can see I have put the, the year in the bottom there too, but I didn't like that as much. Um, so I put it more on the top. Now I can't find it. <laughs> 2020. There it is. So I've been, so this is my first one I've gotten filled up. And this is from the B, since the beginning of the year started. So I'm kind of curious how many of these little balls I'll be able to fill up by the end of the year just by projects that I finish. And I put the kind of the whatever's left over from weaving in ends and stuff like that. So you can see this is from the sock that I just finished. These colors are. And that's basically all I was able to fit in there. And then there's some of the arboreal. You can see that dark, dark plummy color. So yeah, so we'll see how many of these actually get filled up for the year. And then I'll be able to hang them on a tree at the end of the year. Um, again, I don't think I'm going to go through all of them. There's a lot in there. But I might be able to get hmm, maybe like four or five this year. And then I'll kind of keep using them until I run out, basically. Kind of see how many years it kind of takes me through. But yeah, so I just thought that was a fun little little project to do if um, you're interested in kind of creating more of a crafty tree. So there is that. And I think that is it for now. Um, Amelia wanted to come and say hello for a minute. So let me go ahead and stop this and I'll bring her into the picture. Hello again. Hi. <laughs> So Amelia's here to share some of the stuff that she's been up to and some of the crafting that she's been doing. So you want to start with those? Yeah. Um, so I was like, um, I made these flower pom-poms with sticks and the yarn. and um, <laughs> Yeah, so let's talk about these then. Okay. Yeah. So she made these out of some leftovers that I had. Mm -hmm. So let's see, which is the one that had the little nips in it? I think it was this one. Yeah, so she used up one of my leftovers here. This was the Nitpicks Tweed City. That was our dog yawning. Uh, 
<laughs> Nipfix Tweed City DK. Um, this is the little bit that I had left from those baskets that I made last time. And um, so she was able to use up one of my leftovers so that I could put that down as one of my leftovers that is completely out of my stash. And then she used the um, this, which I don't remember what I made out of this. I think it was my one of the cardigans that I made a couple years ago. And this is the John Arbin in the color number three, Knit by Numbers, DK. And yeah, so that's one of the other scraps. I still have a little bit more, as you see here. But she was able to make these little pom-poms and she just went to the backyard to pick up some sticks and she yeah. made them into little pom-pom flowers. <laughs> and yeah, so we'll put those yeah. down there. Okay. okay. <laughs> I've also been drawing a lot since I've been stuck home. So yesterday I decided to just draw like girls as months of the year. And I've had, I have April, May, June, July, September, I'm redoing August later, October, November, and December. Okay, you want to show your favorite one so um, far? My favorite one, yeah. Um, I'll show two of them. Okay. So my favorite one so far is that. September. You're going to bring it in. <laughs> and she just has a leaf in her hair, and I just like it because it's pretty simple. And you said you were going to color these in too? Yeah, I'm going to color all of them in. And then this one's not my, like, second favorite, but I, I like it. And, um, yeah, October. So there you go. Yeah, I still have um, a couple more months to do, and then I'm going to color them all in. And, yeah. Okay. Anything else you wanted to share? Uh, no. No? <laughs> well, you, we did your hair, too. Oh, yeah, my oh, hair. Oh, okay. There we go. <laughs> yeah, we did my hair. We put a little bit of color in there. And we're still going to have a little leftover so we can do it more. Yeah, it's temporary. washes out, doesn't it? Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I'll come back and say goodbye. So, Amelia. Bye. All right. <laughs> so I think that is it for us today. And I will see you in two weeks. And uh, just be sure if you're entering the Stripey Mal um, to be chatting into the, the chatter thread. So you, <laughs> so you could enter in... Um, to winning a prize at the, the beginning of April. So um, keep knitting, and I hope you are doing well, and I hope you're getting through this okay. And yeah, so I'll talk to you in a couple of weeks. Bye.